All right, today, guys, we're going to be taking a look at the 29th Infantry Division um, BCT. We kind of are going to make an instructional video here. So this is going to be kind of an overview of our BCT that we do. This is um, the BCT that we run. We have progressively gone away from a more in-depth BCT and moved towards a more basic one. So that way, more NCOs are able to teach it with the same level of effectiveness. And so that way, we're not shoving down too much information and hard work down people's throats who have only been here for a short period of time. So let's get into this here, where you can see uh, we have our guys lined up here on the wall for a kit check. They're going to pull out their primary weapons. They're at a what we call a tension, which is a 45 degree angle to the best of their ability, and they zoom in with their primary rifle. This is something that we do at every BCT. From here, they're going to pull their knives back out, and they're going to switch over to their pistols. So we're going to go through and check their pistols, make sure they're also correct, then we're asking to check their first gadget, then their second gadget, to make sure everything's correct, and then to alleviate their grenades, throw one over and outside of the site of where we are currently operating. So they all had smoke so which is the grenade that our guys are supposed to run. So next we're going to be moving into formations. Uh, you'll be seeing a photo on the image here in a second that is going to show you all the formations that we do in the 29th Infantry Division. So here we have guys lined up in formation now for squad file. Uh, this is in accordance with that image that you guys saw earlier. Uh, it is actually from the infantry uh, platoon and squad manual that the Army has. Uh, we'll link that down in the description below. But it, uh, here I am representing the point man. As a point man, my primary job is to set the pace of the line and make sure that, uh, well, we're headed in the right direction. I'm, I'm in charge of making sure we're all moving in the right direction. So I'll describe that to each of the new recruits of what my job is. From here, I'm going to move over to the line leader of the secondary line. His job is actually going to be to stay halfway in between myself and the person behind me in the primary line. The primary line in this instance, well, in all instances, is the line where the line leader is actually at. So now I'm going to move over to the first member in the primary line and describe and tell him that his job is to stay 15 meters behind the person in front of him. So an easy way to do that is to put the front sight post if you're M4 or M16 on the butt or crotch of the person in front of you and make sure that the top piece um, is level with their head before the prongs. So the guy I'm at right now and about to leave, I'm making sure that he's also halfway between the guys to his right. And then we get back to this other person, another member of the primary line. His job is also to stay 15 meters behind the person in front of him. Again, putting his barrel at the crotch or butt of the person in front of him and making sure the top of his uh, iron sight post is at level with the head of the person in front of him, excluding the three pillars in the front. So now I've moved into the line. Um, I am actually the last person in this line, just like the person before us was. Uh, an additional function of the last person in the line is to be the line manager. He's in charge of making sure both lines are correct. Uh, as you can see, I am now in that position. So my job is to make sure both lines while we're marching do not screw up and one person doesn't fall out of order. All right, we're going to continue marching and marching and marching. We're going to march over to Alpha eventually here. So along the way, as you can see, we're sprinting to catch up as necessary. This allows us to fill in the gaps when we're looking around and we're not just moving straight ahead. So that way we can make sure that our line spacing does not get disrupted. Because at times it's going to happen, you're going to have to yell at someone. That's why the line manager position was created to make sure that we are making sure people are, well, doing their job. And we know that's not going to happen all the time, so we have someone there to check and balance that. So right here is where we were talking about uh, the secondary line's job to stay halfway in between us because when you approach corners like that, um, with this being Xbox and not real life, there's the complexities of making sure uh, we can go around a corner and recover from that. So in real life, you would still maintain your 15 meter spread on the right side and the people on the left would fill in the um, gap of being halfway in between. But in this instance, due to Xbox and dealing with less experienced people and the fact that these are normally new recruits, we didn't get that luxury. You have to make sure that the secondary line is one that can become smaller. And here I'm pulling security. So now we're moving on to bounding. Uh, we're describing bounding for a two-man team element. And we 
have the left guy, he's uh, first man, and the right guy is second man. So when second man says set, the first man says one moving and moves to his first cover, as he just did. Then he says one set, and then second man moves out of his cover to his next approaching cover. He says two smoothing and then two set. And this continues on in a continuous pattern until the exercise is complete. So right here you can see our left guy, man one, is covering off to the right, the area that would be most vulnerable for our second man. Second man says set, watches the area that is most vulnerable for our first man, which is across this way right here, making sure that when he crosses in that open area, he's not going to get shot. First man is covering that to make sure when his second man crosses, he also doesn't get shot from there. And they continuously kind of watch each other's sixes, or in this case, they're going to be watching each other's blind spots. Changing their movement based off of uh, when one person is moving is set and changing the direction in which their eyes are angled. Right here we have a guy scanning because he has two areas of um, hostile, potential hostile threat. Now they're going to move from bounding actually to defending uh, the Bravo objective over here on Siege of Shanghai. They are going to move to the underneath part instead of a 360 defensive perimeter. At this part, unfortunately one of our members, he was actually having a connection issue and it caused him to be appearing on my screen to be looking forward but he was actually looking down the stairwell. So he's covering his next man that goes over here, and he's going to cross ahead to the structure that's vertically in front of him, or I guess diagonally in front of him, because that is where he has his greatest point of vision. From here, now they're both in the objective. They're going to set up into a 360 defensive perimeter, putting themselves in positions to best watch the areas that need to be covered, which are all entry points. In this map, there is a southern entrance, which is where... Well, this is actually the northern entrance he's looking at now. There's a northern entrance, the southern entrance, and the rooftop. So we have this guy looking at the northern entrance, covering his other man who is watching the su southern entrance, and both of them have decent eyes on the rooftop. The guy watching the southern entrance has a far better access to the skylight right here. He's in a position where you can see anyone jump down from the skylight, and has the ability to watch that southern entrance with pretty high level of effectiveness. Here in a second I'm going to show you the position I sometimes prefer, because now this does give me less mobility whenever I was to take fire, let's say, from that position, but it does give me a greater sight path and puts me in a position of where I tend to have better concealment. All right, from here we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be demonstrating base jumping, rappelling, and what happens when you screw that up. So that right there, what you saw that member do was a base jump that is not allowed in milsim. That is against the rules. That's why we demonstrate to everyone so they recognize what the rules are and what not to do. That right there is what not to do. Here we have a rappel. Our player turns around, he's going to crouch, and he's going to walk off the back slowly of this lip right here. So he also needs to know that he needs to pull back on his parachute a little bit to get off the wall so it doesn't screw up his parachute and cause him to die, and he also needs to land directly below where he started at, which is where he's at right now. So the person that's going to follow up after him here is going to demonstrate what happens when you just push your stick forward after jumping off the back of the tower. So he's going to turn around. He's going to crouch, and he's going to walk off the back. So as you saw there, you never saw a shoot deploy. That's because he couldn't, because he was constantly up against the wall. It wouldn't allow him to. So now we've moved on to the final stage of our BCT, which is showing members when their rifle is most accurate. We put them back into attention again and show them to look at their reticle while zoomed in. They will notice that there's a natural pattern of it swaying up and down and left to right. It forms a relative W style shape or more of an hourglass shape as well. We explain to them on the rises up, that is their inhale, on the rises down, or my bad, on the inclines down, that is their exhale. And on their exhale, it actually pauses for a brief second at the very bottom and that is when their gun is most accurate. So we teach them by um, explaining the theory behind it now that that is when their rifle is most accurate and then when they're taking long range engagement shots that that is when they should do so.